Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing the Calocrine kinin system. Okay, so we've seen so far that uh, in the bloodstream there are three proteins known as high molecular weight kininogen, shown here in pink, uh, pre calocrine shown here in orange, and factor 12, also known as Hageman factor, shown here in green. And all three of these are produced by uh, the liver. Okay, and are circulating inertly within the blood. However, when they leave the bloodstream, when you open up these gaps uh, between endothelial cells at a site of infection, these free proteins can get out of the uh, a blood vessel and into the interstitial space. Now, factor 12 is activated by coming into contact with collagen and becomes factor 12A. And this, of course, sets off the entire intrinsic coagulation cascade. And if you want to know that, um, look at, uh, I've got a video on the intrinsic coagulation cascade in which we go through all of that. But another one of its actions is that it's going to act on the pre also known as Fletcher factor, which we brought in from the blood. And it's going to convert it into calocrine or activated Fletcher factor. Now, calocrine is going to work on Firstly, the high molecular weight kininogen, which we brought in from the blood, but also there is a protein which is produced by your peripheral tissues. So normal cells all over your body, so let's let this be some normal cell here, some normal boring old cell, is going to produce um, another protein known as low molecular weight kininogen. So this is low molecular weight kininogen. Okay, and again, low molecular weight kininogen is often abbreviated to uh, LMW kininogen for short. Okay, and both low molecular weight kininogen and high molecular weight kininogen are going to be broken down by um, the calocrine uh, into new uh, little peptides. Okay, so this is low molecular weight kininogen for short. Right, so let's colour that in as well. So we'll have low molecular weight kininogen here in turquoise. Okay, right. So calocrine is now going to work on both of these, okay? And it's going to convert high molecular weight kininogen into bradykinin, which is a nonapeptide. It's made of five, sorry, not five, nine amino acids, okay? So it's a nonapeptide which means nine-membered uh, peptide, a non-peptide. And I'll tell you the amino acid uh, sequence of it in a moment. Okay. Meanwhile, low molecular weight kininogen will be broken into a slight modification of bradykinin. It'll be broken down into a decapeptide, uh, which is often called caladin. Okay, but it's also got another quite sensible name, which is to call it lies bradykinin. And the reason for that is that actually it's got one more uh, amino acid than bradykinin. And that one extra amino acid is a lysine, three-letter amino acid code LYS. And that's right at the start, so all you have to do to, to convert bradykinin into caladin is add one lysine in at the start. And that's why this is quite sensibly called lies bradykinin. But I would say its more common name is to call it caladin. Okay, so let's have a look at the amino acid structure of bradykinin. And then we'll have a look at the structure. Well, we can then infer the structure of caladin from that. Okay, so it's a nonapeptide, okay? Now, its amino acid sequence begins with an arginine, okay, so I'll write it down, I'm going to write it down, it's only nine amino acids, we can handle this, okay, so in the first position you have arginine, okay, and we'll actually draw this out, I think, in a moment, uh, then in the second position you have a phenylalanine, okay, oh no, you don't, sorry, you have a proline, okay, then in the third position you have another proline, uh, fourth position you have a glycine, okay, fifth position you have another phenylalanine, sorry, a phen the first phenylalanine this is, okay, at sixth position you have a serine, seventh position you have a proline again, eighth position you have a phenylalanine, okay, 
and the ninth position you have an arginine. Okay, so this may seem like useless knowledge, and I would tend to agree with you on that, but it is at least something that you can, in principle, visualise. It's not completely uh, out of the scope of visualising, and you don't just have to reduce it down to a box, basically. Okay, so I think it would be quite nice to actually draw this out, just to have a revision of our amino acid structure. And then caladin, all caladin is going to be then, is you stick a lysine on the front of uh, this nonapeptide. So on the amino side, you stick a lysine, and then it's arginine, proline, proline, and then glycine, phenylalanine, serine, proline again, and phenylalanine, and then arginine. Okay, so... Uh, before looking at what these actually do, let's have a little revision of our amino acid structure by drawing out um, a bradykinin molecule then. Okay, so begin with the arginine then. So, right at the amino end, which means that the free end over here, you have an amino group. Okay, and I realised that I should have just... Uh, yes, because... Uh, I haven't left a space to add on the lysine. So what we're actually going to draw now is we'll start with caladin so that I can put the lysine here. And then we'll say this isn't here for the bradykinin. So we'll draw out caladin. So we'll start with a lysine here. So here's the core amino acid structure. Here's the carboxylic acid group, which will then be linked to the next amino acid along. And the R group of lysine is that you have... Um, four methylene groups, and because I'm lazy and I don't want to have to draw four methylene groups, I'm going to put brackets around it, and then just put a four down there, okay? Um, so that's a nice trick, that you can just sort of draw one methylene group, put a bracket around it, and then label it with a four, to say, repeat this four times. It saves you a bit of time. And then on the end of that, you'll have uh, an amino group. So this is the amino acid lysine. Uh, and the free letter amino acid code for that is L-Y-S. Okay, then it's linked to an arginine, and this lysine is only here in caladin, so let me highlight it up as being separate. Okay, so this is the one that's only here in caladin. The rest of the structure will be here for bradykinin. Okay, so this is the caladin amino acid. Okay, right. Uh, then, here's the amino group of the next amino acid along. Here's the alpha carbon with its hydrogen coming off it. And then the next amino acid along is an arginine. Now, the R group of arginine is that you have three methylene groups. So, again, I won't uh, draw three out because I don't have space, so I'll uh, use this trick again. Then you have a nitrogen coming off the three methylene groups. Then another carbon, which is doubly bonded to a nitrogen down here and then that nitrogen is bound to a hydrogen, and then it's got another nitrogen linked to it by a single bond, and then two hydrogens are coming off this nitrogen here. Okay, so that's the structure of the amino acid arginine, uh, and the three-letter amino acid code for arginine is A-R-G. Okay, and that's there for both caladin and bradykinin. So in caladin, which is the perfect structure that we're drawing, uh, you would have the lysine and then the arginine. In bradykinin, imagine taking this lysine off and then just replacing it with a hydrogen off this nitrogen. That's what you would have. Okay, so here's the carboxylic acid group of uh, the arginine, which will then be linked on to the amino group of the next amino acid along. And the next amino acid along is a proline. Okay, so why have I drawn that hydrogen coming off that nitrogen? Because I wasn't prepared. Right, okay, get rid of that. So proline structure is that you have an alpha carbon, obviously, coming off this nitrogen again. So let's start by just drawing the core amino acid structure. Okay, but proline is unusual in that the R group connects back round to this nitrogen, which is why I've just taken that hydrogen um, rushedly off there. Okay, so what you have is this sort of pentameric ring here, where you have uh, these three carbons connected off here. One, two, and then you've got hydrogens coming off these carbons as well. Okay, so this is the structure of the R group of proline. Okay, so you have this extra ring here, which is quite unusual. It's 
different from the other amino acids. So this is proline, and the free letter amino acid code for proline is P-R-O, pro. Okay, and then the next amino acid along is another proline. So let's put another proline on here. So here's the alpha carbon again with its hydrogen coming off. Here's the carboxylic acid group, and then we'll have this free, uh, well, these free carbon atoms coming off to form this pentameric ring. Again, we have to try and squeeze in hydrogens off all these carbons to saturate them. Okay, and then here's another little squeeze in here. Okay, so there's another proline, so another pro. Okay, right. So uh, we've had lysine, arginine, proline, proline. Uh, the next amino acid that you have along is a really simple one, so I might try and squeeze it in here. It's glycine. Now, glycine is the simplest of all the uh, proteinergic amino acids. Uh, you just have an amino group, the alpha carbon here, and then the R group is just a hydrogen atom, so that's beautifully simple. Okay, now we'll link this on to the next line down. So this is glycine, and the single letter amino acid, sorry, not the single letter, the free letter amino acid code for glycine is gly. The single letter amino acid code is just G. Okay, right. Uh, then on to the next row down. Uh, the next amino acid we have is phenylalanine, which is a bit more bulky. Okay, so the amino group is here. Okay, the alpha carbon's here. And then in the case of phenylalanine, you just have a methylene group, a single methylene group, and then coming off the methylene group, you then have a benzene ring, a six-membered ring with alternating double and single bonds, or rather a delocalized ring of electrons. Okay, and I just will draw that like that, rather than put all the hydrogens off as well. Okay, so here's the uh, carboxylic acid group. So this is all, oh, by the way, this is phenylalanine. Uh, full the name phenylalanine, like so, and three letter amino acid code phe, F H E. Right, uh, next amino acid along, you have the amino group here, the alpha carbon here with the hydrogen coming off it, okay, and then next one is serine. So the serine R group is a methylene group with an alcohol group coming off there, okay. Then we have our carboxylic acid group. And the next amino acid along is another proline. So remember not to draw the hydrogen coming off that nitrogen. Okay, but the alpha carbon still has its hydrogen coming off it. Here's the carboxylic acid group. And then we've got this silly ring again to draw out. Okay, so here are three carbons involved in this ring and six hydrogens coming off them. Okay, so after proline then, you have another phenylalanine. Okay, so here is our next phenylalanine, the amino group, the alpha carbon, the carboxylic acid group, and I'm squashing it in to try and get the final one in on this line. Okay, and here's the methylene group, and then off that methylene group you then have a benzene ring, and this time I might actually draw it uh, in the more conventional notation, I would say, which is now to put a ring there to show the delocalized ring of electrons. Okay, so again, this is a phenylalanine, and I should have said that serine, that's the name of that one, and the free letter amino acid code for serine is SER. I'll label each one up at least once. Okay, and then finally, uh, the final amino acid is another arginine. Okay, so here's the alpha carbon, and now the carboxylic acid group is intact because this is the end of the molecule. Okay, and then the R group of arginine, we've done this before, so three methylene groups, like so. Okay, then a nitrogen here with hydrogen off it, a carbon double bonded to a nitrogen with a hydrogen coming off that nitrogen, and then a normal old amino group up here. Okay, so that's the structure of arginine again. So, this entire molecule is calidin. Okay, if you take off this lysine, then you have bradykinin. Okay, so that was a nice revision of our amino acid structures, and it shows you that, in principle, you can actually jot the structure of these molecules down on a piece of paper. So, calidin is a nonapeptide, sorry, calidin is a decapeptide, and bradykinin is a nonapeptide. Now, what do the two molecules actually do? Well, let's go back to our picture here. So we've created calidin and bradykinin. What they now do is they both go and act on these endothelial cells here, okay? 
and specifically they're going to act on receptors on the basolateral membrane of the endothelial cell. So here is our endothelial cell. Okay, and the bradykinin and calidin are both going to come and act on a G protein coupled receptor that's specifically GQ coupled. So here is its seven membrane spanning alpha helices. And this is what's known as the B2 receptor, which stands for bradykinin 2 receptor. Okay, and both bradykinin and calidin are going to come and work here. Okay, so bradykinin, this nonapeptide without the lysine, and also calidin, this decapeptide, which is also known as lys bradykinin. They're both going to come and activate this B2 receptor on the uh, basolateral membrane of the endothelial cells, and this will cause type 1 activation of this endothelial cell. So basically, this is a positive feedback loop. So what will happen is the endothelial cells will undergo type 1 activation very quickly because of histamine being released by the mast cells. This will allow the buildup of an inflammatory exudate which will bring in that high molecular weight uh, uh, kininogen. Uh, it will bring in the precalocrine and it will also bring in the uh, Hageman factor and then those will set off uh, the kinin cascade or the calocrine kinin system which will result in the production of bradykinin from high molecular weight kininogen and calidin from low molecular weight kininogen uh, which was found in the tissue and was made by all cells of your body pretty much um, but is usually inactive because uh, it has no calocrine to convert it into calidin and these will go back to the endothelial cells and trigger more type 1 activation. So it's a nice positive feedback loop, basically. Okay, so that completes our discussion of the calocrine kinin system.